as far as you're concerned. You don't need a big boulder. Uh, right. I mean, <laughs> it doesn't need to be um, This, it looks to me like one person would like to respond to that as well. Any objection? Two people, any objections to hearing this? Two other points? Just wanted to check I saw some of these, and I think because it seems like it's turning into a side conversation that would be saved for another time, discussion and stack of civil amendments. Um, any objections to hearing these two points of information? All right, thank you. Well, I apologize, I've been talking a lot, but to answer your question, no, there is no language to uh, codify a means of keeping people who we have voted to expel out. Um, in fact, I, and this, this is opinion, cut me off if you have to, I feel as though it would be a conflict of interest if we then proposed a, a, a means of doing this. Okay, <coughs> all right, thank you, I've been cut off. No, no. My question was not that. Claire, as a point of process, what is your point of process, please? Have, has this affinity group met once, and is it anyone but Alan? That's not the point of process, that's your question. Right, I, mean, I had to restate it because she was I misunderstood, I apologize. Okay. All right. Could you please restate that, Alan? <laughs> <laughs> have you met, and is there anybody in it but you? Um, the evening when that was affirmed, it was made known in that meeting. I had made announcements afterwards. I am the only one, I've had conversations with you. I'm the only one who has been willing or able or ready or whatever to move this process forward. I have put it, I'll call to Jeff Weininger from Wayside Center for de-escalation. I've talked with Adria Sharp. Um, I have people sending me online links for skills and strategies, et cetera. I, as point person for it, have set my own personal goal within 30 days to have as much of what can be identified as needs brought forward through threshing processes back <coughs> for a formal proposal on as much of a chunk as we can identify. So I would say to everyone in the room, the answer is to the extent that you have ideas or concerns, you're all part of this affinity group. To the extent that you don't share that, you're not part of it. So that's that's the answer. Um, Claire, did that answer the question? <coughs> yes, I now understand that Alan has been the only one and there has not been a meeting. Okay. <laughs> Those are my two questions. All right. Um, thank you. There saw some more hands for clarifying questions. Um, were there other clarifying questions? Okay. I just was going to ask for it. A restatement of, of what the issue is, so I can understand. I, I got lost. I'm sorry. What was it? Sure. What you were talking about? You were talking about vetting <laughs> people in advance of coming in. No. Or you, it, sir, is this a clarifying question to the previous clarifying question? <laughs> I'm, I'm probably speaking in a confused manner because I was confused about what you all were talking about. <laughs> restatement. <clears throat> well. <laughs> um, I, I'm sorry, but the clarifying question should be to the proposal, not to the other clarifying questions. And if you miss a clarifying question, um, it's best to turn to your neighbor and ask <coughs> what that was about. Um, so I'm going to move on. Josh has a clarifying question, and then Graham. So is um, is this indefinite expulsion or is it like a three month, six month hiatus sort of a deal, or is this you can never come back? All right, uh, good to well, this is indefinite. Um, if somebody wants to bring a proposal to, I mean, a proposal to alter this proposal at a later date and bring it back, whatever, I, that's not to me. This is all. This is now until the end of time. Okay. Um, Graham had a clarifying question. Um, I would like to ask the GA. Um, I have a letter written by five individuals who can't be here tonight. Um, I feel it's really important that I read it, having heard the blocks things here, I didn't pass it off. And I want to ask the GA if we can move to stacks if that's possible. 
I see a couple point of processes, I think because that was not clarifying anything in the proposal, but a motion to move. Yeah, during stack seems like that would be the proper time um, to bring that those concerns up. However, um, it's looking to me like clarifying questions are winding down, so I'd like to call, see if there are any final clarifying questions. All right. I would like to say, I would like to say now um, that we normally temp check here. It's my understanding, however, that there are dissenting voices ready to speak to this issue. Um, I'd like to see if there are objections to skipping temp check and moving to stack. Is that an objection? No, it's not. Okay. I agree. Are there any objections to skipping the temp check and moving to stack? Okay. Um, so we're going to take stack. We're going to open up a stack of five. Um, two minutes. Is that what we discussed? Um, <coughs> we're going to ask each speaker to keep themselves for three minutes. Um, <clears throat> and I'd like to remind everyone that although in stack we have heard from both dissenting and supporting voices, uh, we come to a consensus based decision making process, I believe, with the intent to hear dissenting voices uh, before the supporting. So please, if you'd like to be in stack, uh, with that in mind, <laughs> please raise your hand very high and keep it up. Did you you have your name name well. Thank you. <coughs> so we have all of them. Steve, Jason, Grant, Danielle. Okay. Um, yes. yes. First? May I do it from here? Yes, sir. You know, my question is, you know, I, I think through the process, we need to be asking of what we're talking about. You know, for me, it's very clear. It's a question of safety. And when we start to get override our humanity with the process, we become a victim of it. You know, I'm disturbed by all this intellectual masturbation that I see going on. I mean, we're so educated, we're dumb. I mean, it's, it's, it's clear that people feel threatened. And it's clear that we say collectively that we provide a safe space. If folk are not, what's, what is the cutoff point? Is the cutoff point the threat of violence or the actual putting hands upon a person? Where do we draw the line? If a person feels like they're threatened, we all have seen the intimidation. It's not like it's, it's a question of whether it's real or not real. It's very real. Now, if the person responds to the fact that they feel like they're being threatened, is that the problem? You know, I heard the last year, which I was planning on never coming back, I knocked the dust off my heel because I was so disenchanted with the process. You know, I heard a person say, well, it's not the process. It's not the individual, it's the process. But well, that same same as saying it's not the it's not the it's not the, the spider but the web. It's the same thing, family. When one of you are threatened, all of us are threatened. That's the thing. We can't lose sight of our humanity with with this concept of of of, of process. You know all these gang symbols that we throw up to to get around what the real issue is. The issue is violence. The issue is intimidation. The issue is threats. The issue is usurp power. I am so important that my words have more weight than anybody else, and I'm going to jam this thing up, whether you like it or not, and we have others sitting on the sideline making excuses why one person can do this. Look, I'm from the street. I, all that stuff don't mean, that, that ain't real to me. When you say you're going to do something, I'm going to stop you before that process happens. Real talk. Let's be clear. If you say it, you mean it. That's all I was to say. Okay. All right. <clears throat> 
Um, Graham is up next to speak. Um, so I, I have a letter that is written by five people, but I think there's probably more than just the five of us who feel this way. Um, I'd like to ask, because it's suggested by facilitation, because this was written by five people and it is as concise and written out that I have perhaps more than three minutes, and it takes more than three minutes to read the whole letter. Why? So important. Why aren't they here if it's so important to them? Uh, please, please. I'll, I'll, yeah, I think it's partially I'm here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, are there objections to extending time uh, past three minutes? Is that an objection? It is. All right. Um, we don't have a very fixed um, uh, rule or guideline and process for extending time. However, um, the way I've seen it and understood it to be is that when a speaker reaches their time, that someone in the body may call for a motion for more time. And if there's a second or a third, then that time will be extended to three more minutes. Okay. Um, so I, I want to premise, preface this by saying that, um, that I was probably not going to stay tonight if it went this long before I had the chance to read and was going to hand it off to somebody else. But I've actually been really moved by everybody speaking and all the blocks. And so um, I felt like I really wanted to be able to read this and clarify some things. Um, and I think there's some things in this letter that don't represent reality. But I think there's a lot of things in this letter that do represent reality. Um, and so I just want to know that whereas this is a dissenting view towards what's happening, this, the, this particular process, we have the utmost respect for everybody who's taking this process. And I hope that's really clear. Um, dear beloved members of our General Assembly, Several of us have either chosen not to attend GA today or are unable to join. You have the utmost, we have the utmost respect for you. Please do not take our absence to mean anything else. We write this letter to express deep concerns for the long-term health of this movement, <coughs> the consensus process, and everything we have worked so hard to create. We feel particular concern regarding the mass block that is taking place today, as it seems a clear breach of the goal we have ascribed to from the beginning which include to be inclusive, fair, and just. We've often said that we seek to create a new model for self-governance, where the opinions of the few cannot guide the body, but where the body guides itself. We are concerned by the evolution of the use of blocks in our GA in general. As we understand it, a block must be used with entirely apolitical intent. And one of the things that's been really clear to me today is that this is not a political thing. Um, this is coming deeply from the hearts of everybody who's here. Uh, a block, and I think that becomes clear later on too. A block should represent overwhelming concern with the ethical direction of the GA. Too often, we have seen blocks that effectively redirect conversation as they should, but are not founded on, on an unbending ethical principle that, is dis that, if disregarded, would result in a person's leaving the movement for real. A block so unbacked turns from being an ethical guidepost <coughs> for our movement to something more akin to collective blackmail. Um, again, that's not necessarily speaking to this block, but we believe we've seen that happen here. Um, another concern um, that these blocks highlights is the quickness with which people are willing to leave this movement. No one said that revolution would be easy or quickly attained. Our dear friend D often refers to our collective struggle being what binds us. We believe this sentiment with all our hearts. We wish that our first response to struggling crises would be, First, what can I do to take care of myself so that I can return to the group stronger and better equipped to participate in our collective struggle? And second, what can I do to build the systems that will ensure the long-term success of our participatory direct democracy? We bring these concerns to light not to call foul on those blocking today. Like that. Motion to extend. Motion to extend. Second. Seven. We bring these concerns to light not to call foul to those blocking today. We know their concerns are real, valid, and should be acknowledged. We do not assume that their blocks lack ethical bases. But we do want to raise the question, what is the block's intent? To refocus Orbis' priorities back to the fundamental truths and principles we aspire to, 
or to find the quickest and easiest solution to a long-standing problem. One of these principles <coughs> is respect. We demand, we must demand respect. And we understand that, it, that, that that is much of much the basis of this block. We agree, and we would like to offer, that we can demand respect, but at the same time also hold firm to other principles we believe in, such as fairness, the idea is that all voices are welcome, and that justice is possible in the collective decision-making process. We believe that a, when, when a group of people says, you choose us or them now, this inhibits the collective's ability to create solutions together through a multitude of voices by limiting the field of options to two. Isn't it like a two-party political system where you only get to choose between bad and worse? <coughs> To be clear, we are not suggesting that the GA give up its power to protect itself from disruptive members. Rather, we simply request that the GA choose the route to this end that best serves the foundations and long-term aspirations of this participatory direct democracy. Essentially, we are trying to create an internal accountability and justice system based on democratic principles. Let us implement a process for handling these situations and hold firm to it. Let us hold ourselves accountable so that we may hold others accountable. Let us create tools for dealing with, the, with disruption on the spot, and then let, let us hold a fair standard that we can apply to all disruptive parties. Without a doubt, we must come together to create a safe space for all, for all those who are left, and for, or for all those who have left, and all, all those who remain. Rather than act as we often do, quickly, in anger and frustration, to solve the current crisis, let us build a system of strength that will ensure we together hold the tools to guide, direct, and protect this assembly through every crisis that comes, and they will come. We suggest we accomplish this by creating and consensing on a proposal and a system that is developed through our normal decision-making process. This process has already begun, let us simply commit to finding consensus as soon as possible. We strongly feel that the choices the General Assembly makes tonight will lay out its path for some time to come, and perhaps indefinitely. We to urge the GA to choose carefully and cautiously. <coughs> that said, our concerns voiced, we, support our f we, we, we submit our full support to our GA, including those who block today. We give Time. gratitude. I've got two sentences. Second. We give gratitude to the facilitation team for your dedication, and we wish to be clear that we are not going anywhere. We are here for the long haul, whatever you choose. Our faith in our assembly is overflowing. We trust that the choices guided by, that any choices guided by the collective will of the people are for the common good of the people. And as a people united, we can never be divided. You know, divided. We love you. Layla, we join you for a to Chris. Um, I, I just wanted, I thought it was important for me to make that clear because I don't want to stand in opposition to a single person. I'm not comfortable with that, but I am very comfortable saying that I love you all so much and you're all such valuable assets to us that we need you here. And since y'all were brave enough to say I feel intimidated and threatened, I will stand with you because that's what's important is that y'all feel safe and secure and that's why I'm going to vote with y'all. Um, I also wanted to say, um, there's a saying in the legal community that a right without a remedy is valueless. 
I think y'all did yourselves a disservice by not creating a proposal that actually does anything to, sh to make Chris leave if he comes here. I, I think, I think that y'all did a disservice because right now you were just asking us to give you a right and give you no way to actually value that right. And um, I'm a little disappointed that y'all didn't create some sort of a process. I know that's difficult, but that's where most of the criticism is coming tonight, is that there's no process included in y'all's proposal that would actually deal with what's gonna happen, which is Chris is gonna come back at the next GA. I don't know if y'all don't, don't realize that. He's going to be at the next GA. He was at the last GA, he's, he was at this GA. He's gonna be there. And when that time comes, what are y'all gonna do about it? And I think that because y'all didn't include that in your proposal, there are a lot of people who are on the fence like me because I don't think y'all are really doing anything. Y'all are just asking us to support you and I'm fine supporting you. I just don't know to what end that's gonna end up being. Thank you. Um, Jason. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I wanted to say that. I don't know um, how metaphysical some of y'all are, but uh, I asked my coffee grounds today, um, <laughs> what, what, what is the future of Occupy Richmond? And um, I had, I, it was really, it was really weird. It was, um, it was like the United States, but then you could see like a bottom portion like sinking away, and then there was a big explosion thing on it, and then it was my cup, and it was like it was like a, an explosion of skull and some dirt. So uh, I didn't really like that. Uh, I, I think that um, <laughs> <laughs> new consensus process. Coffee grounds. Coffee consensus. So so anyway, so anyway. Um, I think I, I, I think that um, there we can't start a war without having a process for taking care of war. Look at uh, look at the South and Bellum South. You know this is we're we're the poor part of the country. You know, so I want to be the poor part of the movement because of the thing. Figure out your plan for dealing with it first, and then bring it. This basically to me was just a yeah we're all pissed at Chris. I get it. We all get that now. Um, I say come up with a plan and then. Okay. Um, so that stack has been closed, and we're going to reopen stack. That was that was everyone who was in stack, I believe. Let me check with Billy and Chris. So Does that five people? Like, no. That was four. Yeah, four people. Yeah, four people raised their hands for that stack. Um, uh, well, there, we, we noticed that Tiffany and Rain wanted to be out of the stack. Yeah, I but stack was closed. Now we have the opportunity to reopen it. Open stack. Yeah, we're going to reopen Second. stack if there's no objection to that. All right. Um, and keep your hands up high, please. There's a lot of hands. Vaughn, Megan. For the future, if you put your hand up while the stack is in yeah. taking place, if stack is taking place, that stack of people has already been closed and stack is not open for you to get on stack. But as we allow to hear all voices, we can see we've reopened stack. I think that's what just happened. Um, and they're discussing how to order that stack since it was rather large and we normally take stacks okay, I'm five. Issue first. Um, um, 
actually I'd like to say out loud. Uh, I, I think this is getting to the point of being ludicrous. We have people leaving already because they would just like to vote. I think we know where most of us stand already. And we are just intellectualizing this to death. All right, um, Bobby, please, and, and thank you for your concern. There's another exactly. meeting. Mm -hmm. so it's entirely unfair for us to not be able to say what we've been when we've been seeing and hearing what's been going on for this entire week. And for this we entire meeting for like the last four months. Please. Right, but for those that came here today, we came prepared for us to have, be able to have a chance to speak. And that is entirely unfair. It's entirely unfair to not care about people's lives. Please. And we're getting a bye. Okay. Okay. Uh, bye. Is another vote gone. All right. Going There's a on. couple points of process there. Um, Santos, did you need to? I was just going to point out. I don't think mayonnaise are supposed to be set up. All right. Appreciate both of those concerns. Mayonnaise. Um, or to be brought to the table check for the first though, considering the nature of the Mayday, uh, the sentiment behind somebody who would raise Mayday, it's very close to a lot, it's a very serious concern, and that's why that just happened, uh, and those people were allowed to speak. Um, we have, that has definitely happened before in GA where Mayday has just gone ahead and taken the floor. And if it's a rule that that's not to happen, it hasn't been enforced. And I know we're all very paying very close attention to the process tonight. Um, <clears throat> with that said, Stack seems like they probably talked about the stack that just opened up. Um, Sarah? Um, we, yeah, I, I mean, I have questions. Um, there were how many people who raised their hand to be in staff? Nine people raised their hands to be in staff. I'll take mine off. Anyway. Yeah, I can take mine off. It's it's not a completely new set. Okay, I uh, thank you. Um, so we have seven people in this stack. Is is are there any objections from the body to have a stack of seven? No objections. So we're gonna have a stack of seven speakers. We'll have. Three minutes. I know stacks are normally five, but we're definitely here to hear all voices, and I don't know how to do it a better way. There's a mayday. Um, would you like to talk to the temp check? Can we, can we get a temp check? We've been talking about this for two and a half hours without a temp check at all. Hour and a half. Okay. Feelings, man. Um, Perceptions. There is, <laughs> there is a motion to hear the temp check. I'm sorry, I did ask earlier and there were no objections to skipping the temp check in order to hear dissenting voices. Please. Thank you. Um, there was a motion to get a temp check. Are there any objections to that now? All right. So all in favor of the proposal as it stands, would you please put your Twinklers in the air. All right, please keep them up. Yeah, we're not voting, we're taking a temp check. There's a point of process. Could you read it again, please? I think it's something things in line online. All right. Um, that seems very reasonable since it's been a while since. Would you please reread the proposal? Yeah, on the bottom. Uh, we stand before you today in a collective block asking for the immediate expulsion of Chris Dorsey from all Occupy Richmond General Assemblies, meetings, events held on private property, and future occupations. Um, there's another clarifying question, and then we're going back to that temp check because it's been interrupted. Uh, does, does that mean that it's all right for him to uh, attend pub events on public property? Or is that that's mm -hmm. a thing? Yeah, we're, we're trying to go into temp check. Um, I, it, we're moving backwards right now, and I see some concern in the room about that. Um, I personally don't understand how to proceed with this, except to go to the temp check. I'm sorry. Um, 
So, um, did we? Oh, I'm sorry. We're moving to the temp check, and then we're moving past the temp check. All those in favor, please replace your twinkling fingers in there. Stand asides, abstains, twinkles in the middle. Will and Chris, and Will said 
sit the fuck down or something like that. I thought that was very poor, and I think that kind of crap, this inner nicene, is that the word? This, this fighting within ourselves, we can't have that. We can't live with that. And if I'm the only one bringing up, I'm sorry, I don't think I'm the only one who heard it, maybe so. Well, might correct me, that's what I heard. I, I think apologize. that kind of crap is gonna cost our lives. There are, there's a world out there that needs us. We don't need to spend our time doing this poop, you know? This is, this is not productive time. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna like any of your great, meaningful, we don't point out stuff, but this is just not important stuff. There are things to be done. We need to occupy things, not deal with personality conflicts. If Chris shows up, you know, and wants to make a ruckus, we can all turn and say, I'm sorry, Chris, you're looking for a different group if you want to go burn down buildings, you know? If you want to shut up and, and be a part of the process, great. I don't want to make this about Chris. It's not about Chris. It's about us getting our act together and being able to say collectively, hey, we don't put up with it. Leave, we'll get it together. I, I, don't, I don't particularly like the proposal. I don't think it's well worded. And I don't think it really gets to where we want to go. We want to say it's safe to be different. You can stand up, make an answer yourself, or be eloquent. It's OK. We're about that. We're about letting people speak. And I don't think we've really quite achieved it. We have incredible voices, incredible facilitators, but we haven't quite, for some reason, got that voice yet. I just want to put my two cents in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> okay, now, um, uh, facilitation is making a motion. This, uh, in a way, I, we are asking those who are in stack if they are willing to see their position in stack and move to a vote. Um, is there anyone? There are two hands. Process. Three hands. So uh, it sounded like Vaughn had a friendly amendment. Have we passed that uh, part of the process yet? Yeah. Just say that the last couple weeks here at GA, it seems that civil amendments have been coming to formal proposals at different times in the formal proposal process, whether it be during clarifying questions or stack. So um, we um, I'm I'm sorry. Um, because I don't know how to proceed with this. Is that just correct it comes after stack? Yeah, um, it has come after stack, and we can we can ask for a vote uh, from the body as we have suggested a motion to move to a vote on the proposal. Before we do that, we can consider asking for a vote to hear civil amendments. Although that's up to the proposer to whether or not they even want to accept civil amendments. Um, so it looks like the process right now would be the motion is actually not to go directly into uh, a vote, but to end the discussion process. And then if um, those who proposed the, the proposal are willing to hear civil amendments and then move into a vote with any civil amendments that they accept. Um, are a, a, okay, sorry. all for that? So you're, are you saying people who are on stack don't get to speak? No, that's why I'm saying like this is we're not saying that we're trying to find out how the body wants to go. Yeah, there's a point of process. Why are we taking a vote on whether or not we're going to go through the process we have established? Facilitators have, have already explained that we see this as a different kind of GA than normal. And we've taken liberties, with your permission, with the process in order to bring about the best discussions. We had a temp check with no opposition. Typically, in order to facilitate the best decision, we would move to a vote. OK, I'm just asking why we would take a vote on civil amendments or not. That's just what we do. No, the vote is not on civil it's amendments. About it's about moving to civil amendments our and closing our staff. Our intention would be to ask the body yes. if they would like to. So are we OK, um, specifically to those who were in staff, are we OK with moving past staff 
or do you have something that you especially feel that there's a anyone opposed? Okay, then we will continue with the sack as it is. Okay. Uh, yeah, if you'd like to restate the stack. Tiffany? No, just go through the entire Tiffany, stack. Tiffany, Ray, David, John, <coughs> and Josh. Okay. Uh, to address the concern as to, again, you made a really good point, Danielle, about the right without the ready. ready. Okay, and again, I think that was something that this group really thought about. And I'm going to quote the, uh, the great Graham, where the heck he is. I learned something really, really smart from him um, in one of the very first GAs I went to at Kanawa, which was there are, we, we got really bogged down in making decisions about each little part of everything. And he said, if we can just try to decide on this one thing, do we all agree that we don't want this or do we do want this, then we can move on. And I think that's what this group of people are saying is can we agree that we will not be held hostage by Chris Dorsey anymore? Yes, it would be really wonderful if we had a way of doing it. However, I think we'd be here until tomorrow approving that if that were attached to it because somebody's going to have a problem with the way that's handled. I really love Vaughn's amendment. My only question is, is do we have people trained in that or are they willing to do it? Do it. So I, I say the amendment sounds great, let's do it, but we need people to do it. But again, I'm saying we are asking for this group to put our foot down. I know we don't have the method yet, but put our foot down, and when the man walks in next week, we turn our backs. We say, you're not welcome. Our facilitation team says, you are not welcome because that's what this GA agreed on. If he stays, we'll come up with something. But I'm saying we need to put our foot down. If you've never been on the receiving end of Chris Dorsey's abuse, you're lucky. I, I say that with ever, <laughs> every fiber in my being. He has had me in tears. He scared people. He scared me. I don't like the idea of excluding anyone. It, it goes against what I think what we're trying to create here, to have a, a place for everyone. But to allow him to take over our valuable, precious time and have anyone frightened or threatened, we really, as Tiffany said, we've got to put our foot down. You know, if it's stopping GA when he walks in the door, maybe that's it. You know, we don't have the process. Let's say, I'm sorry, Chris, you're not welcome here anymore. You've sucked the life out of us. You know, you've got to keep toxic people away from yourselves. It takes life energy out of us. And I'm really serious about it. And if anyone has any questions of the veracity of what I'm saying, talk to me. Well, I have to apologize. I know I've spoken a lot tonight, but I have a lot of strong feelings. Um, one of them is I don't. This this is it feels like a notion of of you know an ultimatum. I don't think that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to do is say we just can't be involved anymore. Um, what we we don't see why you know everybody else in the group goes along with the process. So why can't this person? If we have one person not going along with the process, do we have to do something? We have to expel them from the group if they continue that pattern of behavior, which we've just done. The other thing I want to say is I try to show them compassion. And I believe in compassion and forgiveness and tolerance and all that. And I exemplify, try to exemplify that. Um, but some people don't want that. And some people show by their actions that that's not what they want. They don't want tolerance. They don't want compassion. They want to be the front of the world. We can't do that. As has been said, it's already taken up too much time. And I don't want it to be a divider of the group because I want to be in solidarity with everyone. I just personally can't, can't work anymore 
that we're having someone take over the whole thing. And I think we've got better things to do. I think we've done really good from them. And I think that you know we have a lot more to do. But this is one obstacle we have to deal with along the way, unfortunately. And if this will help us in anything, I think it's going to help us to come up with that process that we have got to come up with in dealing with this situation, this kind of agent provocateur that doesn't want the compassion, that doesn't want to be part of the group, but wants to be the main focus of the group. So I don't want you to feel like we're giving an ultimatum. It's not quite that. I don't even know what that process <laughs> was. <laughs> yeah, I, was like, I, I, would, I probably yeah. would if I'd known. Yeah. I'll talk to you. Yeah. So I'm yeah. sorry. I'm going to avoid this side conversation. There's a point of process. There's two of them. i just like to say that um, people who aren't familiar with the process are def definitely yeah. under voices. Yeah. Um, if he is speaking, wishes to speak to this proposal with an opinion, I would motion to move him to the end of staff. And I see a lot of support for that idea. All right. Thank you. Um, we'll figure that out. Thanks. Sean. OK. Um, I have a few things. First of all, I would like to say that in the case of people like myself who are not very really comfortable with speaking in groups, having someone like Chris around basically inhibits our free speech. Like if you have someone who's angry and screaming and yelling, you feel intimidated and you do not want to talk, his exercising of this quote unquote free speech is inhibiting mine. And that is not okay. Second, I was part of the group of people that helped put this proposal together and we bare bones it because we feel that there is a conflict of interest between us putting a proposal forward to deal with a situation that we are personally involved in. We are clearly have very strong feelings on this issue. We want it taken care of. We want you all, we want the General Assembly to help us do that, but we do not want to bring it to you forward saying, pass this thing or we're all leaving. We don't want to hold everybody hostage. We wanted you to come up with this process, and that's basically it. We want him gone. We, we, we trust all of you to do it properly. Josh? This may be a little unorthodox. I don't know if anyone has uh, has done this. Um, I would be very interested in knowing, and maybe you do this at set times, and if you do a, a, a stop on this particular point, but knowing something of a bio of the people, you know, both by names, do you keep a roster, do you do anything like that, so it's possible for people like me and others uh, to you know, have some idea, you know, of where they might go, who they might might talk to. I know you have working groups. Okay, just do it for fun. Um, let me give you my bio a little bit, why I'm here. First off, I've been waiting for something like this for years. Years. Okay. I am a sixties and seventies activist who has screamed at my daughter's generation, where is the social conscience? Is there anybody on college campuses talking about social issues anymore? I go on five, 10 minutes of that, I won't. But so seeing that I have, I mean, it was a, got some, it was really a nostalgic feeling. I got excited. I am excited. My fire is burning. Because I see the potential for this 
And so it's real important to be successful. But I see the potential of this, if done right, could actually become that third party, if not in a formal sense, be significant enough politically to accomplish what many people have only given lip service or worked <coughs> a to in the past. Um, I have also gone through some of what you, many people who are in the middle class fall <coughs> have middle class. Um, I was, uh, I don't know if I said, uh, I'm son of an army brat, I'm a third generation military. I was in Vietnam, back from Vietnam before I went to college. Um, uh, associated with the, you know, some of those experiences that one does not like, you know, you know afterwards. <coughs> um, I, but nevertheless, overcame them. I had a great family life. Went through corporation, had a good corporate job. Lost it in a downsizing. Next company I was with, downsized again. Next company I went with was a startup that I'd done a lot of research on, but it turned out was undercapitalized, out again. I've lost a house. Then I ended up losing a home that I rented. Eventually it was on the street. I'm, so, I'm sorry. Yeah, three minutes. Motion to extend. All right, thank you. Uh, so I know the homeless bit. I've lived, uh, went all the way from a, a working for a corporate uh, top ten corporation all the way to nothing. I kid my friends. I say, well, <coughs> I'm working on my third million. Uh, <coughs> I just happen to lose my first two. Uh, I'm very optimistic about the future, and groups like this are, are helping get it to do it. I would like, however, to get some idea before leaving, you know, and I sort of sit down. I'd like to just ask for a real quick hand poll to get an idea of the group. Is that possible? Mm -hmm. Did I do that? Um, mm -hmm. On a couple of subjects? I, I'll, I'll mm -hmm. ask the group after, <coughs> yes, after you finish speaking, I'll ask the group if they'd like to have that straw poll. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll finish speaking. Okay. Um, there's a point in process. Conversation. I also saw another point of process that gets addressed. There's no point of process. Okay. Um, the motion was. Sorry. Okay. I, be I believe that the motion from the speaker was to allow him to ask the body a straw poll question before he leaves tonight. Um, wondering if anyone has objections to waiting till after this process, of, or after the stack, to do that. If there's objection to that. All right. Um, I would ask, are there any objections to hearing that stroll now with the goal of getting back to stack after the stroll? There is, there is objection to that. Um, yeah. Uh, please, please, please. Um, there's, there's, there's a stronger. Yes, yeah, there's, there's stronger or equal dissent <coughs> about those ideas because it's stepping out of process. I'm going to ask that we continue um, because to open up the floor would be out of our process. Uh, sir, we wanted that to work okay. fine. Uh, Thank you. But please, as long as I get, you know, yeah. get a chance to ask if I'm comfortable. Yeah, right, we'll move on to the next person in the Teddy. <clears throat> when I joined this movement, I joined, I came in with this. He said, I'll show you the ropes. 
I'll show you some of the people. And as I walk with Chris through the plaza, things were happening to him as I was walking with him. There were individuals on the unicycle following around. And then there were individuals with the cameras all up in his face following us around. I'm like, can't you report this? Don't you have some kind of sergeant at arms or something in? He's reported a lot of things to a lot of people, and he's asked for a lot of help. But to my amazement, he was still blocked on Facebook. He was threatening his life. He lied on and said that he had stole things. It's my three minutes. You don't want to hear it, but you need to be out too. Please. I want to say this. Please. This is my three minutes. You run your fingers through her head. But these are my minutes. I want to say this. As long as there's a higher power that controls us, any of you all have been dishonest. When that man went to you all for honest help, and you all turned your backs, when that man went to you or called you on the phone, some of you all been in jail to use his letters and his information to get out of jail. Some of you all did, and he never tried to steal the name Occupy Richmond. He simply said that we were the founders. We were the first ones down there. We set up the trash can. We set up everything down there for you guys. So I'm saying this to you. When you lie down tonight, I hope that a good spirit takes over because none of us are perfect. Actually, I feel like I just saw a white boy get hung up by the ear. <coughs> I've seen my brothers get hung, but I've never seen a white boy get strung up like this one here. And I can't wait to get back to the hood and tell this one. I love you guys. Some of the things you have done have been wrong. I talk to you like an adult, and I talk to you like your mother. You either love me or you hate me. Ain't no in-between, and I'm all woman. If I do something wrong, Teddy Perlman can stand up and say, I screwed up. What can I do wrong? Let me make it right. I don't have a problem with that. I'm not pissed off.